Hi class, uh, welcome to class tonight, uh, Monday the 15th. Obviously I'm not with you here tonight. I did mention t this to you on Wednesday. Uh, I'm out at a conference right now that I have to take care of. Uh, but I will be back on Wednesday. So tonight here we have uh, Professor Taylor. Uh, she's an awesome professor, an awesome person. And I hope that uh, she's able to guide you through some of the work here tonight. She is completely knowledgeable in all things. So if at any point anything I say here tonight is confusing to you, please stop the video and ask her a question. She's more than capable. Uh, and besides, she's a lot of fun to talk to. So uh, thank you to Professor Taylor for being here tonight for the class. Uh, so as you see here on the, on the screen, I'm not going to pretend to point left or right. I'm not that good at this. But uh, you'll see that there's the schedule. Uh, we're going to start off with some double entry journal work. In fact, that's the primary purpose of tonight as we begin to engage in week three of the research process. Uh, I'm hoping that you'll be able to read uh, your source. I hope you brought your source here with you tonight, printed or in book form if you went for a book, um, unless you have your own laptop, which in that case you'll be able to pull it up there, but we don't have any devices in this room, and we did talk about this on Wednesday, uh, so you should be able to have your source available to you in some way, uh, because we are going to do this double entry process together. So um, you can kind of see the words there. We're going to be working in the textbook a little bit, and I'm going to model for you today, hopefully, if it all goes according to the I'm going to model uh, using a document camera so you can kind of see what the expectations are, what to do, uh, and so forth. And so by the time we're done here tonight, you should be able to have had one already completed, leaving you two more that you'll need to do uh, by next class session. And I know that seems like an awful lot of work, or it will seem like an awful lot of work, and I'm not going to lie, it's not going to be something you can do in an hour, it's going to take you a couple hours to do. So try not to leave this until the morning of, try to do a little bit here at, for homework tonight, a little bit on Tuesday, maybe finish it up on Wednesday morning before class, but definitely don't wait until the last minute because there's no way you'll be able to get this assignment done in time. Uh, so without any further ado, uh, let's begin by having your research journals. I've got my purple one here. And go ahead and just open it to any, probably the next two pages that looks like this. Uh, one right side, one left side, because we're going to use that as the critical part of how we do the double entry journal. And then have your source available to you somewhere nearby that you can just take a look at. At this time, it would also be a good idea to pull out a highlighter or other some kind of uh, pen that you can underline your source with. Or if it's on the laptop, uh, be prepared to um, underline mark passages or just use the highlighter function in Microsoft Word to be able to highlight the things you're going to be looking for. So let's go ahead and pause the video right now so that everyone can get the materials out. And I'll switch over to the document camera so I can show you how to begin. Alrighty, so here we are set up. I have my source in front of me. I just grabbed something that I had laying around, uh, something about Disney, uh, political history of children's film, nothing in particular. But let's just say it was related to my trend of Disney films, for example. So the first thing I need to do, actually, is to open my textbook to page 124, because there's a wonderful chart there, figure 3.3, .3, that is absolutely going to help you through this process. Now, as you take a look at that page, uh, you'll notice that it is there are kind of two separate columns and it says first off notes from the source left page or column direct quotations paraphrases and summaries of material from the source of ideas that are important to the project of ideas that are surprising or puzzling or generate some emotional response and then it says be careful to include bibliographic information at the top and include the page number from the source so this is basically your opportunity to look at your source and figure out what information it is you want to use. I'm not going to ask you to analyze every single part of the source. That's not, that's not what academic research is all about. Academic research is about finding what you need and then using it to do whatever it is that you plan to write about. So that's why in that, under the first bullet point, under the first square point rather, it says of ideas that are important to the project, in other words, things that are important to your question, or ideas that are surprising or puzzling or generate some emotional response. So as I look through this, um, I take a look at my title and I'm going to highlight anything I believe that is important that fits one of those two criteria or I guess those two bullet points of criteria. And so I'm just going to pick some passages at random since what I picked doesn't actually matter. But I want you to take some time and go through your source and find things that are either going to answer your question or are bringing up some kind of surprise or some fact you didn't know or anything along those lines. And this is just for the left page. In fact, we're not even writing in the journal yet. We're just going through the source. So if you see something, just kind of maybe highlight it 
if you're using this on the computer, underline it on your document or perhaps use the highlight function. Um, and so take about uh, about 10, 15 minutes to go through your source. Uh, so, you know, I just kind of what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm not going to highlight everything because I don't need everything, uh, but you want to be selective. Now, sometimes we'll run into a problem where, you know, we kind of get kind of the hoarder instinct, which is we always want to highlight anything because we might need it later on. You should be somewhat familiar with your source. You have read it before, and so you always, it'll stick in the back of your mind if there's something that you might want a little bit later on. So, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm just kind of passively going through this just so you have an example of how to highlight, apparently. Uh, so, like I say, uh, take a few minutes, take about 10, 15 minutes. So if we could pause the film now uh, so that the students have an opportunity to work on this. Okay, welcome back. After your 15 minutes of highlighting, um, it's been like two minutes since I made the last clip, so it's 15 minutes for you, and that's the important thing that you've had a chance to highlight. Um, hopefully, the notes did pop up on the video itself. I forgot to mention this uh, during the last part. So, but on page 124, there are some suggestions on how you engage with the material uh, after you've highlighted it or as you're highlighting it. So hopefully you're looking for things that were important to your project that could have potentially answered either part of your main inquiry question or any of the follow-up questions that you've had, or things that were surprising or puzzling or generated some kind of emotional response. So I'm hoping that's what you looked for uh, when you were highlighting. Now, I'm not going to use the paper because I realized from the last clip that that style I was using, it wasn't very good. I mean, it was okay for highlighting, but it wasn't very large, so you couldn't see what I was doing. So I've set up this kind of two-page thing as well. And although you may be handwriting here in class tonight, this is a completely viable way of doing the double entry method as well. You can do it on the computer. In fact, I do encourage you to do so, uh, perhaps for your second and third sources, which are due on Wednesday, as you'll see in the homework. Uh, so I'm hoping that's what you end up using because it does save you a lot of time typing. But of course, you're welcome to handwrite if maybe you don't have a computer or you just prefer to handwrite. So anyway, obviously over here I have my, my left page and I have my right page. Uh, we're working on the left page right now. Uh, and as we've titled it, this is Notes from Source. I know it seems very small. That's because I've had to zoom out so you can see two pages at once. That's going to be in the center. I'm going to underline it just for my own reference. And then I'm going to start off with number one, obviously, as we talked about on Monday. So I don't want to take too long to do this. So I'm simply going to pretend that I'm drawing from my source. So I found the first thing that I want. Um, and I can either choose to either directly quote it I can paraphrase it or I can summarize it. And as we discussed on Monday, I do hope that you balance all three. So maybe for this one, I'm going to do a direct quote as an insert direct quote from source here. I can, I can type, I promise, source here. And then I want to quote it from, let's just say I wrote it and it's on page two. That's how I do my direct quote. Uh, for my second point, maybe I want to summarize it and I say this is where I should directly quote or this is where I should summarize. And because it's summary, uh, we're not going to use the citation. It will be fine at the works cited page. And maybe the last one I'm going to paraphrase and I'm going to use my own words, but it's still the main ideas of the author where I say direct quotes or in this case paraphrases. Paraphrasing should be done on the left side. And because that is an idea that I stole from somebody, I'm going to use from somebody, I'm going to put a direct reference there. Now, um, I was in a state of kind of figuring out what we were going to do for this. I don't want you to analyze your entire source. That would take very, a very long time, especially since I know some of you have pay sources that are like 75 pages long. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to limit it to the 10 most significant, I can do this, uh, the 10 most significant parts. So this would be part four, part five part 6, part 7, and so forth until you get to 10. So 10 is the magic number in this case, not 9, not 11, but 10. If you want to do more, then go ahead and do more. Uh, but for this assignment, uh, you only need to have 10 uh, parts done, 10 analyses as it were. So that's the left side. So uh, at this moment in time, we're going to pause the video um, for about five or six minutes here, enough time for you to go through and uh, use a balance of direct quotations, paraphrases, and summaries to copy down the 10 most important parts that you've highlighted from your source and place it into the left side of your journal. And we'll, uh, when we reconvene, we'll go on to the right side. Welcome back class. 
So now we're going to move on to the right side now that you've had a chance to take care of the 10 most important parts from your source there on the left. Now the right side, this is where most of the time is going to be spent and this is where I think you really benefit from using the computer because as we've talked about last Monday, this is now the analysis, analysis of source or sources in this case. Uh, so as we talked about and if you're kind of looking along with page 124, this is where you're going to fast write for a minute and a half or two minutes uh, depending on how long you feel is appropriate, anywhere in between there is fine using some of the questions that are on page 124 there at the bottom and at the top of page 125 questions along the lines of what strikes you what is confusing what is surprising or on page 125 does it support or contradict your thesis obviously some of these questions won't work for your particular style or the particular approach you're taking to this paper and that's fine these are just uh, starting points I think you can't go wrong with the first one so when in doubt head back to the first question but you do want to try to give yourself a variety now, as I also mentioned on Monday, this is where most of your paper is actually getting written. So although this is going to be a very long process, this is basically your paper. You've already got the direct parts that you're going to want to mention. You've already gone through your source and pulled those out, and now you're analyzing that. And that's really what a research paper is. You're analyzing key facts. All you'll need to do is draw a conclusion, and that's a fairly minor process compared to selecting the quotes that are best answering your question. So during this process, it's this part right here on the right side where you're going to actually be writing most of your paper. I fully anticipate many of you just simply copying down what you already wrote uh, on this part for your analysis, and that's fine if you do. Obviously, you're going to want to retweak it and, and you know fix up some grammar or some some clear um, some clarity issues. But you know that's your 102. You should already know how to do that. So for the analysis of the source, uh, for this one, uh, you want to do this for each of them actually. But for the first one, I'm going to start off with the question: What strikes you? What is confusing? Uh, what is surprising? Now, I don't have my source. I, I use my kind of fill in the lines here. But I would fast write. I'm going to write this fast write for. 1.5 to 2 minutes. Now there's there's no way I'm going to be able to figure this out. I'm not going to come home and, and go to your house and follow you to make sure you're fast writing for one and a half to two minutes. That'd be ridiculous. Uh, not to mention creepy and probably illegal in some fan or some some fashion. But uh, this one is completely on you. If you are willing to stick with the process, if you're willing to stick with the academic process and hold yourself accountable for one and a half to two minutes, just set your phone alarm or have somebody time you, then you're going to benefit. But of course, there is no way for me to enforce that one and a half to two minutes. But I do strongly encourage you to do a fast write as it does tend to force your brain to think of ideas. Um, and try to avoid just kind of writing whatever you think without pressuring yourself. So please, please, please hold true to the academic process and please, please, please fast write for one and a half to two minutes free to your sources. Uh, so at this point, um, I don't know if class is almost close to being done. I suspect it might be because we have been going at this for quite a while. Um, if there's time, go ahead um, and perhaps Professor Taylor can guide you through some of the fast writes. Uh, so by timing some of it. But um, in any case, if there is any time left, like I said, try to do some fast writes, try to get the source completely finished so as to minimize your homework. So at this point, I'm going to stop the video. Um, I've got two more things to cover with you, or actually one more thing, and that's just the homework, and then you'll be uh, good to go. So I will stop here and be with you again in just a moment. So here is the schedule that we always start off with. This is the homework. Uh, today, as you have probably gathered by being here, we worked significantly on the double entry journal. We read our sources, we paraphrased and summarized key points, we fast wrote in the right column, and uh, we've kind of gone through an example, not as, not as much as we could have uh, because I'm not there with you. Uh, and then um, we're left to the homework. So hopefully you're able to finish this part here. Hopefully you're able to analyze one source. Um, here it reads on this side, complete double entry journals for all three sources. Do not be surprised if this takes several hours or many pages to complete. I am going to reduce that requirement uh, because I think it's unfair to have you guys have to do all that by Wednesday as this is a long process. So uh, I'm anticipating that you have most of your first source already analyzed and so I'll split the difference with you and I will have you simply do a double entry journal for one more of your sources so instead of doing a total of three sources you'll have two sources done one that you've already done here in class and one that you'll do for homework and I will check two of those 
uh, those two on Wednesday, and then um, we'll talk about where we're going to, what we're going to do to make up that other double entry, just so that you don't go crazy with trying to write this. So as I said before, please try not to try not to hate this process. It is going to be fairly tedious, and it might be kind of aggravating and annoying. Try to break it up. Do one today. Do the other one tomorrow, or you know some other time uh, before class, uh, and you'll find that when we get to week four. Uh, that it will be a much better process for you. So um, I will stop now. I will have, uh, I think actually that's all I'm going to say because there's nothing else left to say. So uh, thank you again for your attention and my thanks to Professor Taylor. Uh, give her a round of applause for being here tonight. I do appreciate what she's able to do for us. Uh, so um, I'll see you all on Wednesday. Again, two sources, not three. You've already got one done or most of one done, so just do one more. And uh, that's, that's all we're going to do. So folks, have an excellent Monday, and I will catch you all on Wednesday. See you later.